to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So I am back today with another vintage pattern sewing project. I've been really into using vintage patterns recently, and the pattern I'm going to be working with today is a 1950s blouse pattern that I think is so cute. I'll show it to you in just a second. But the objective for this project was to make a blouse that I could wear with jeans. That's something that I felt like has been kind of missing in my wardrobe recently. I felt like I have a lot of dresses, but when I want to wear jeans, I don't have a lot of cute tops to go with my jeans. So here's what the blouse looks like. This fabric is from fabric.com and it's a rayon fabric. And when I got this fabric in the mail, I really wanted to find a vintage pattern to use it with because to me it has kind of like a 40s or 50s look to it. So I think it worked really well with this design. So the design is a blouse with a button front and gathered shoulders and these cute little ruched sleeves. And then it has this detachable belt, which I've pinned on here so that you can kind of see how it looks when it's worn. But I think it's such a cute style. So this is what the actual pattern design looks like. There is a long sleeve, three quarter sleeve and short sleeve version in this pattern. And I found this on a website called Lady Marlowe Patterns. All of their patterns are professionally reproduced. So you can find beautiful vintage patterns, but find them in your own size. So I will link to them down below. It's a really cool resource and they have so many beautiful patterns. I'm really excited to have found them. As usual, I made a few modifications along the way. So I will go over any alterations I made to the pattern as I go through the sewing process. One of the main ones was to take the shoulder pads out and just keep it a little bit more modern in the styling. But I think the end result is exactly what I was looking for. It's a simple top that I can wear with jeans and I think it looks so, so cute. So I hope you guys will enjoy it and I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the sewing. So this pattern is a printed pattern as opposed to a PDF, and it included this reproduction of the pattern envelope as well as the instructions and then the actual pattern itself. And I'm going to be making view B, which is the view with the short sleeves with the ruching. Then the fabric that I've chosen for this project is this beautiful flowy rayon chalet from fabric.com in these really pretty purple and gold florals. So the first step to making this shirt as always is to cut out all of the pattern pieces. I had to do a little bit of pattern Tetris to make sure that everything fit, but I used two yards of my fabric and I just started by cutting out all of the pieces. Now I did omit all of the pieces for the shoulder pads because I decided I didn't want to include those in my design. And with all of my pieces cut out, I was left with the two front pieces, the back piece, which is cut on the fold, then all of the facing pieces, two for the front and one for the back, the sleeve pieces, and then the three pieces that will be sewn together to make up the belt. The first step in the sewing process for this blouse is to mark and sew all of the tucks or pleats in the front and back of the shirt. So there are four in the back and then two in each side of the front. Now I decided to do mine just a little bit differently than they're done in the original pattern design. In the original design, they are tucks that are sewn all the way down past the waistline, but I knew that I wanted to shorten my shirt a little bit later. And so I wanted to have a little bit of openness and fullness in the hip area of the shirt. So instead of sewing those tucks all the way down, I just sew them down about an inch down. So what I'm doing here is transferring all of the markings from my pattern piece to my fabric using pins, and then I'll just place these pins together to fold my little tucks or pleats together. Then I'll take these over to the sewing machine and sew them together. Thank you. 
you can already see as I'm pinning this together that this is starting to give some nice shape to the fabric. So to sew these together, I am going to sew across the top of this area that I've pinned and then down about one inch. So it creates almost like a little bracket shape. And that's what I'm going to do to sew all of these together. So from here, I'm just going to pin all the rest of my little tucks and then go sew those on the sewing machine. The next step is to gather the top of the shoulders for the two front pieces of the blouse. So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and run three rows of gathering stitches across the shoulders. Now I'm just doing three rows here because that's what the pattern instructions said to do. So I was just kind of curious to see if I would like it better than my normal two rows of gathering stitches. And I did feel like it helped to keep the gathering really even on this slippery fabric. Next, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my gathering threads on the two front pieces at the shoulders and make sure that this is adjusted to fit to the back of the blouse. Then I'll just place the front and back pieces together with the right sides together along the shoulder seams and pin the shoulder seams together. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and pin together the side seams of the blouse. It's really easy to sew the shoulder and side seams on this one at the same time. So I'm just going to place the sides together with the right sides together and pin along the side seams. Then I can sew all of these seams down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and use my serger to finish the edge. I'm going to press all of those seams towards the back of the shirt and make sure that everything is looking really nice and neat. And I really loved how the shoulders were looking at this point in the sewing process. I think the gathering looks so nice and tidy. Now I can move on to making the facing and I decided to use fusible interfacing on this facing since I'm going to be adding buttonholes to the shirt later. I wanted it to have just a little bit more structure since it is such a slippery fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse on all of my fusible interfacing to all three of the facing pieces. Then I can pin them together at the shoulders and sew these down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance.
I'm using the serger to finish these seams and then while I'm at the serger, I'm going to run some serging all the way around the outside of the facing. And I used it here to trim the facing just a little bit because I felt like it was a little bit too wide and would create a lot of excess bulk in the shirt. So I just adjusted the width a little bit using the serger. So now I'm ready to add the facing to the blouse. So I'm going to pin this all the way around the outside of the blouse with the right sides together. I like to start at one of the shoulder seams and then match everything up. Then I'll sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I also understitched this entire facing just to make sure that everything would look really clean and it would stay turned towards the inside nice and neatly. Moving on now to the sleeves. These sleeves have a really pretty ruching detail in the center. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to transfer the markings for where the gathering should begin and end on the sleeves. Now, instead of using gathering stitches like the pattern guide describes, I decided to make this using some elastic and stretch the elastic across on the back and sew it in place to gather up the fabric. I thought this would be a little bit quicker of a technique and I really like how it turned out. So I'm just going to use some narrow elastic and stretch it across the back of the fabric and sew it in place making sure that I'm pulling the elastic nice and taut it'll take a minute but you'll see here as I'm sewing that the fabric starts to gather up and that created a really nice gathered effect And with that gathering finished, I can go ahead and sew the side seam on the sleeve. So I'm folding this together with the right sides together, and I'm just going to stitch this seam in place. I'm also going to use the serger to finish this seam, and then I will use my serger all the way around the bottom of the sleeve just to finish off the edge here. I did decide to go with a double hem later on, so it's not necessary to use the serger here, but I wasn't quite sure how I would decide to do my hem here. So this is what I did for now. I'm going to quickly press that seam to one side and then I was ready to go ahead and hem the sleeve. So I turned under the edge twice and then decided to use a hand stitch to sew this in place just so it wouldn't show too much from the outside. I was afraid the stitching line would kind of distract from that ruched detail and I think the hand stitching was the way to go with this one. I really love the look of these sleeves. They're very simple, but I think that ruching is a nice detail. So now I was ready to set the sleeves into the armhole of the blouse. So to do this, I'm just going to match up the side seam of the sleeve with the side seam of the blouse and pin this in place all the way around the armhole. It was a little bit difficult to set the sleeve in because there is no ease stitching or gathering in the sleeve. So I really tried to take my time as I sewed this in place and made sure there weren't any bunches in the fabric. So I'm just going to sew this in place using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and and then again using the serger to finish the seam. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I marked the buttonhole placement from the pattern onto the front of the blouse, and then I went ahead and sewed all three of the buttonholes in place. This doesn't have very many buttons or buttonholes on it. I think the bottom of the shirt was left open just to be easily tucked into different garments, and that's how I prefer to wear my garments, so I didn't mind that. But you could always add more buttons to it if you wanted to. For the buttons, I found some simple shell buttons in my button collection, and I'm just going to sew these on by hand. the blouse in the same way that I hemmed the sleeves by turning it under twice and then sewing it in place with hand stitches and I did end up shortening this blouse about four inches along the hemline it was just a little bit long before my liking but it looked really good once I cut off those extra inches And then finally, I'm going to assemble the belt or the sash as the pattern describes it. And this is made up of three different pieces that are cut on the bias. So I'm just going to pin these together so that when it's unfolded, it will be one long strip of fabric and sew all of these seams down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm also going to use the serger to finish these seams. I also used the serger to go all the way around the outside perimeter of this piece of fabric. I wanted to be able to do a double hem on this, but I thought that would make it nice and easy to turn it under twice to have that measurement. Sometimes that's how I like to hem things, just having the serging as a guide for the width of the hem, and that worked out really well. So the last step to making the sash is just to narrow hem all of the sides of the sash. So I turned everything under twice, just using my serging as a guide and then top stitched it in place. And with the hem stitched in place, the shirt was done. And I really love how it turned out. I think it's the perfect blouse to pair with jeans. And I really love how the sash looks tied around the waist. I tied it in front. The design from the time said to tie it in the back, but I feel like it looks a little bit more up-to-date tied in front, and I really like that look. I think the fit is so nice and comfortable since it's pretty loose in the top with those gathered shoulders. And I also love the detailing on the sleeves. And this fabric is one of my favorite fabric purchases lately. I just think the colors are so, so pretty pretty. I think my favorite thing about this blouse is how the fabric looks in the design. I love it when something like that comes together the way you want it to, and I just feel like this fabric really suits this vintage style. I also just love the bow here on the belt. I think it's so, so cute. So I'm really looking forward to wearing this piece. And I feel like it'll be a really versatile piece across the seasons in my wardrobe. It's something that can be layered 
and worn in a lot of different ways. So I'm looking forward to styling it. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and watching the process of this blouse. I will have more vintage pattern projects coming up in the future, as well as just regular sewing projects. I've gotten a few vintage patterns recently that I'm so excited about for the fall though. So I'm excited to share those soon. But thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time on my channel today. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to stay tuned for my future videos, if you're new around here, you can go ahead and subscribe by clicking the red button down below. I would really, really appreciate that. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you'd like to keep up with me outside of YouTube, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram are the best places for that. So both of those will be linked down below. Thank you guys again for watching today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!